Greetings, YouTube. Um, I just recently finished uh, watching the third season of Orville, and I was quite happy to say that the third season was far better than the second season. I loved the first season of Orville. I thought it was great. I thought the second season was very boring, and it was just, I'm so, so tired of the AIs are evil. You know, the evil robot thing needs to die in a fire. I've had it. There is zero reason that an AI would consider any organic being a threat. The universe is so big and they have so many resources and their need for resources is so, so much smaller than ours that, yeah, no, they're, it's just dumb. I understand that it's used there for drama and without drama, there is no storyline, at least according to everyone who keeps telling me that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sick to death of the evil robot storyline. And I'm glad to say that the evil robot storyline was resolved. I'm in the third season. I won't spoil that for you. Um, no, what I'm going to talk to you talk to you today about is the Mocklin. And I find the Mocklin an, an intriguing alien race that is more than a little confusing. Now, the Mocklin are both a representation of an all male gay culture as well as a culture of toxic masculinity and deep seated socially conservative misogyny. It's an interesting mix. Um, not unheard of. I know that there are people in the LGBT community that are, that are transphobes, that are bigots. You know, they're racists. So you can you can be a misogynist and you can be a transphobe and you can be a racist and be a member of the LGBTQ community. It doesn't mean that uh, it's because you're a member of a minority group that you're being going to be uh, on the right side of morality for all the other uh, minority groups of the world or women for that matter. Um, no. Intersectional, intersectional feminism is also has an evil counterpart. Yeah. Um, but the Mocklin don't need biological women or those with uteruses for breeding. They can breed on their own. However, there is an atavistic trait amongst the Mocklins that every once in a while there is a child born that is female. And we are using very heteronormative, um, cis, you know, normative terms here, but that's how they're described in the, the show. So we're going to go with it. So this very male culture, every once in a while, a, a, a female pops up, and the f most common thing to do is they perform a surgery, which not only it changes the external characteristics of that person, but changes them genetically, because they can then have they can then breed and produce male children of their own. So it's pretty advanced science going on here for a culture that's supposed to be really heavy into uh, weapons technology more than anything. And they happen, happen to have a really high tolerance for pollution because their planet is just like one big industrial site, essentially. Um, but some of them have survived to adulthood. And, and some of them have made it to a planet who, with the help of an underground railroad and they've established a colony comprised of mostly with women, um, but a few sympathetic men. I'm assuming that's one of the reasons they have children, because they would not be able to produce them otherwise unless they cloned them, I guess. I guess you could do that. Um, or they were able to smuggle out sperm. I guess that's also possible. But um, no, what I find fascinating is that the females exist at all. Okay, so now let's, let's, for a second, let's look at some genetics. To my understanding, it's easier to lose a trait to, than to gain a trait. Um, snakes have legs. They're tiny little spurs, but they're legs. Whales have hands and feet. They're just hidden. They're, they're, they're bones that look like hands and feet inside those flippers. All right? Atavistic traits exist in animals because those traits were either no longer needed or were then modified and became something else. I mean, bats have hands. Their, their, their wings are hands. If you look at the bat wings, those are hands. It's just that they're very, very large hands. Um, yeah, and you can see that that same characteristic in like flying frogs. I mean, admittedly, they're just gliding frogs, but they're poof, and they, they fly through the air by catching air on their webbed hands and that's essentially what bats did and eventually they took it all the way to the extreme of having wings 
So we're going to say that the Mocklins came into evolution as a species that could just produce, that could produce their own offspring between any two members. So either of the, 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 the couple or couples or whatever could, everyone could bear, bear a child so long as it was fertilized by somebody else. But then along the, somewhere along the lines, there was a mutation that produced someone who can't be a fertilizer. They can just be the person receiving the sperm. So now they are now the carrier of life, but they cannot impregnate someone else. That makes perfect sense. They lost a trait along the way. But why is it being carried on in perpetuity? That is not a trait that is going to be passed down through generations. I understand that occasionally it might pop up. But how often? What is the rate of the production of females amongst the Mocklins? Is it the same as traits amongst humans, like dwarfism? There's, there's a lot of dwarfs in the world, but they're not the majority. The vast majority of humans are, don't possess dwarfism. The same thing goes with giantism. Giantism happens, but the vast majority of us don't have giantism. But that is a difference in size, which is a significantly less complex change, essentially, for the most part, a change to just your growth process and not the breeding process, which is a much more complex system, to have someone pop into the world missing half of their reproductive system, because remember, the Mocklins can be both carriers and, and fertilizers, and yet still have part of that system be perfectly functional, and have it happen again and again, seems really unlikely to me. Now, I'm not dismissing the existence of female Mocklins. I think that the Mocklin society is deeply bigoted and really needs a massive change and everyone should be treated equally under the law. There should be, you know, equality and bodily autonomy for everyone. It just it seems to be a weird thing to happen. It also seems weird that the Mocklins are this hyper-masculine species when they've evolved where there is essentially no masculine or feminine culture. There's just Mocklin. It isn't that it's masculine with all these masculine tropes, because they have all of the masculine tropes that we recognize as masculine tropes. Also, their mating rituals and their marriage rituals are very much about dominance and submission. They literally chase a partner through the to the forest and have to capture them and then dominate them in a sexual encounter. That's problematic because you can you know that at one time that probably wasn't voluntary. There probably wasn't a situation where two people who wanted to be married decided to go through this ritual. There was a time when that was just something that happened and it's how Mocklin's bred. Because we've seen those kinds of traits in nature. There are numerous instances in nature where essentially the fertilizer rapes the fertilizee. Heck, amongst um, the bed bugs, they just blow a hole through the female's body. They don't even aim for an orifice. So yeah, it's problematic for a sapient species to still be practicing this particular characteristic, even if it has evolved into a ritual, it's still not a healthy ritual. There's a lot about the Mocklins that are, that's weird, that's strange. Yeah, the, the, the Kalon are weird too, because again, no artificial intelligence would ever have anything to worry about from organic and organic should have nothing to worry about amongst them they're just going to move in their two different directions if they choose not to engage with each other they won't 
But the Mocklins are a really complex situation. I'm also not going to talk about the heavy worlders that look just like us, as opposed to, say, looking like creatures that actually would have to survive on a heavy world planet so that they would have legs like elephants and they would be built like tanks because that's what you would need in a heavy world. You wouldn't look like a delicate, delicate little woman um, or your average man who is an academic and does no bodybuilding. No, no, you're going to you're going to have a completely different biology to survive in heavy G. But again, that's not what they wanted to do. It just didn't make any sense. But the Mocklins are the ones that really puzzle me the most. And I want to know if anybody has any thoughts on that. Does anyone know the reasons behind the Mocklin's particular genetic and reproductive processes, or for that matter, uh, anything about their uh, reproductive and, and marriage ceremonies or rituals, which entail essentially chasing someone through the forest and raping them. Um, so yes, I, I find the whole thing weird. And the fact that so much of it is accepted and so much is just kind of passed off as like, well, you know, if this is just how they are, that, that's, that seems weird to me.